The film starts with the sound of thunder in a dark room. An unshaven craftsman strikes a match so he can go on with his drawing. We discover that he's in jail. Then we move to a striking minister who spots something dangerous in his congregation. A cop named Jake enters the location of the crime and finds a lady who has been made into a sculpture. Jake's accomplice, Angel, thinks the guilty party to be the craftsman. In any case, their chief, Frenchie, flexes his French facial hair and says that the craftsman is still in jail. Later around evening time, we discover that Angel's father is in basic condition at the clinic, however, she would rather not see him or even discussion about it with her significant other. The following day, the police discover that there have been different casualties like the sculpture lady. Notwithstanding, since the craftsman is in jail, these appear to be copycat wrongdoings. Darling has close to zero insight into different casualties. So Frenchie makes sense of that quite a while back, the craftsman had stolen and killed six ladies who were the entire night women. His techniques would include harming and saving his casualties with rice and removed from castor beans. After this, he would improve the carcasses and set them up for anyone to see all around the city, very much like the sculpture woman we saw before. In the interim, the copycat executioner tracks down another casualty. The following day, Jake takes his pills and goes with Darling to see the new casualty at the train station. Frenchie lets Jake and Darling know that he's thinking about asking the craftsman to assist with getting the copycat executioner. Darling figures that she ought to proceed to converse with the craftsman due to her experience in brain research. Frenchie concurs with her, yet Jake punches the table to lay out predominance and leaves. Presently, Jake and Angel go to visit the craftsman. Be that as it may, Jake says he won't sit with Darling for the scrutinizing because he doesn't have a decent history with the craftsman. That is the point at which we discover that the craftsman took the seventh casualty who was Jake's accomplice for a considerable length of time. Jake had crashed his vehicle while pursuing the craftsman, and his accomplice got out to stand up to him. Notwithstanding, he unusually soaked himself with gas and set himself ablaze. Presently, Angel enters the psychological facility and discovers that the craftsman is planned for execution. She at last meets the craftsman whose facial hair is a lot greater than French's. Darling notices the copycat executioner and requests his assistance, yet he needs his capital punishment to be driven to lifelong incarceration. This is hard for Angel to guarantee. The craftsman requests a photograph of the most recent casualty. Angel makes sense that the recipe used to safeguard the casualties match is the one utilized by the craftsman. Since this recipe was never uncovered to general society, the copycat executioner may be somebody the craftsman trusted. The craftsman requests that Angel leave the organizer with him so he can concentrate on it, yet in addition requests his unique workmanship supplies, which have been secured since he was captured. This is non-debatable. The execution date is drawing closer soon, so Darling is required to move quickly before she leaves. The craftsman specifies the chief heavenly messenger, Samuel, however, Darling doesn't grasp fantasies. She then, at that point, lets Jake know that the craftsman has a man within because he realizes she is coming to see him. Jake gets upset when he learns about the artist's demands, so he drives to a coffee shop for some caffeine relief. While he's gone, Babe checks out his dashboard and finds a holy book. However, she gets a jump scare from an unholy man and tells him to get lost. Then we see the artist looking at all the art supplies which have been successfully brought to his cell. He later notices something in his art, so he asks for a phone call with Babe. Jake and Babe visit the coroner's office to inspect the latest victim. We learn that she had a demonic tattoo on her body, which is common among the women in a nearby brothel. This confirms the victim to be a nice lady, just like the artist's choice of target layer. Babe gets a call from the artist who says that his advice is exclusively for her and no one else. He tells Babe to check the victim's wings because they're important for her journey to the afterlife. Babe, Max fast and inspects the wings, only to find the nail polish brush hidden inside them. It's a discontinued shade which Babe used during college, so she becomes suspicious at the cop station. Babe asks Frenchie to consider the artist's commutation request, but Jake gets angry and walks away. Babe decides to conduct some research on Jake and comes across some interview files. We are then taken to a flashback which shows us how Jake threatened to shoot the artist after arresting him. This is because the artist had mentioned how Jake's partner finally saw the light and became it. The next day, a fisherman finds another victim. So Babe and Jake rush to the scene. The newest victim also happens to be a nightly. The cops are worried that things are getting out of hand. Upon inspecting the body, Babe finds a compass needle, which belongs to Jake's partner's compass. It turns out that after the partner's death, his compass went missing. And this prompts Jake to think that the copycat killer is targeting him and Babe. Now, Babe goes to see the artist, but he's suffering. Episode. A doctor explains to Babe that the artist had sustained a blood clot on his brain at the age of 10, and it torments him even today. 
Babe is also shocked to learn that Jake spent three months in therapy after the incident. Now, Jake thinks back to how his partner laughed at him in an evil fashion just before he set himself on fire. Back to the present, the copycat killer goes to a hormone bar where cowgirls are getting freaky with each other. He tips one of the cowgirls, hinting that she will be the next victim. The artist finally wakes up and explains to Babe that he would also leave items with his victims, similar to how she found the nail polish, brush, and compass needle. He then says that he might have revealed some of his secrets to his secret admirers who would write him fan letters. Babe allows the artist to go through his fan letters for clues and also asks him about the compass needle. The artist knows nothing about it and only says that it symbolizes a lost soul. Now we see the cowgirl from earlier who has been tied up by the copycat killer. She begs for mercy, but he uses a hammer to end her co-writing life. Babe is tormented by this case, so her priest husband uses sage to expel negative thoughts. Meanwhile, Jake visits a voodoo priestess who performs an unholy possession ritual on a volunteer. Suddenly, Bam and her husband hear an intruder break into their house. It turns out to be the unholy man from earlier who attacks Babe. Her husband comes to the rescue, but the unholy man makes a quick escape. Jake rushes to the scene, but then he gets a call about the cowgirl victim. So he and Babe get to work at the scene of the crime. Babe finds a compass, which turns out to be the one Jake's partner had. Things only get weirder when Jake and Babe find some hidden writing on the wall. It's a Dutch translation, meaning infernal landscape. And this makes Jake uneasy. He reveals that his partner sent him an image of a holy book of the exact same name before burning himself. Jake and Babe go to a library and find the book, which has the name Samuel Light. The artist had mentioned this name to Babe earlier, and Jake reveals that Samuel was a fallen angel whose true name happens to be Lucifer. Later, Jake takes Babe to a holy father and asks him to cleanse her soul. She angrily walks away and tells Jake to keep his superstitious beliefs out of his work. The artist suffers another episode and is taken to the hospital. At the same time, we see the city's governor freeing a trapped pigeon. However, she gets kidnapped by the copycat killer. Now Babe meets the doctor who's looking after the artist. She calls him out for extending the artist's stay at its facility. And the doctor confesses that he's only doing this because the artist's mind fascinates him. Jake has a creepy vision about the cowgirl. Then we see the doctor receiving photographs of the governor being tied up as his latest victim. However, this does not fit as a memo, as the governor is not a nice lady. Babe and Jake meet Frenchie, who is now considering the artist's request for a life sentence. The current suspect is the unholy man, but Babe doubts the logic behind it. Frenchie wants to go through the artist's art supplies for some clues, but Babe is firmly against the idea. The artist is taken away under the excuse of a medical checkup, and then the cops go through his art supplies but find nothing. Not even a trace of his smelly hormones. Now, Babe tells the artist about the governor, but he's upset because he knows the cops went through his art supplies. He also says that he burned all his fan letters but also committed them to his memory. Babe begs the artist for information, but he takes her to a flashback where his mother would make him hide in a secret room while she carried out hormone yoga sessions. During one such session, the artist drew a picture of Jesus, but it made his mom upset, so she threw him around like an adult toy, causing the blood clot. He's still suffering from this kind of childhood, which had driven the artist to target night ladies as subliminal revenge against his mother. Back to the present, the artist tells Babe that the copycat killer is a forger of Renaissance paintings. When he mentions a specific painting, he points out an antique store that sells counterfeits and also makes a cross sign. Babe rushes there with Jake and spots the forged painting with the cross. She and Jake sees the forged painting but are suddenly attacked by the unholy man. So Babe chases after him. The unholy man calls out her name and jumps off a parking lot to meet his holy maker. It turns out that the unholy man was a nurse who used to administer drugs to the artist. However, he was let go due to a bipolar condition. Now Babe finds a thumbprint on the forged painting and sends it for analysis. Meanwhile, Jake remembers the artist asking to draw his face. Babe is told that the prints on the painting match a night lady, so she goes to her address with Jake and the cops. They find a skeleton statue there. So, Babe figures this is the artist's home, and the skeleton is none other than his mother, used as an experiment for his poison formula. The lab results come back, but the unholy man is not a match. Babe loses her patience and confronts the artist for sending her on a wild goose chase. However, the artist says that he can give her the exact address of the copycat killer once he's done sculpting her face. Then he tells Babe that she has childhood scars but couldn't heal them because she refused. Babe refuses to believe this and explains how her father would burn his hand in front of her to show what hell does to flesh. The artist seems to know a lot about Babe as he also points out that she married her priest husband only because of her daddy issues. Babe loses her temper and demands the address, so the artist gives it to her and the other cop head there. The artist also gives Babe the sculpture he made of her. 
and then she catches a ride with Jake. Babe suspects something off about her recent chat, so she looks within her own sculpture and finds the right address. It turns out that the first address given by the artist was just a decoy. So Babe and Jake head to the correct spot. They enter a creepy house but find a wall filled with pictures of Babe and her life. Jake calls for backup while Babe calls her husband over a hunch, but it goes straight to voicemail. Babe hears the governor crying for help, so she locates her. The copycat killer is also there. So Babe shoots at him. But then we witness a twist that's bigger than the Eiffel Tower. The copycat killer is revealed to be Jake, who is seemingly possessed by the artist. This means that the copycat killer was not a copycat but rather a vessel. Now, Jake talks as the artist and takes Babe to another flashback. After the blood clot incident, the artist was confined to a wheelchair, so he spent his time drawing other people. That's when he realized that he could enter other people's bodies after looking at their drawings. Basically, whenever the artist had his episodes, he was possessing someone else whose face he had drawn. This allowed him to carry out his heinous crimes without suspicion, and he explains that he's doing this to appease Sam L. The unholy man is also confirmed to have been one of the unwilling vessels. Just then, the artist controls Jake's body and attacks Babe. But she shoots down the artist, taunts Babe, and gives Jake his body back. Babe reveals everything to Jake, so he tells her she must stop the artist. Then Jake is sent straight to meet Jesus, but he's treated like the devil in the news. The public is told that Jake suffered from a split personality, possibly because of the trauma of losing his partner, which made him think he was the artist. Frenchie doesn't believe that Jake can be a killer. But Babe knows nobody will believe her story. Later, Babe attends her father's funeral with her husband but spots the doctor so she goes to meet him. The doctor is currently possessed by the artist, so he tells Babe that he's coming for her next as he never intended to kill the governor. He states that he only did this to change his death sentence to a life sentence. But Babe reveals that she's pulled a fast one on him. It turns out during their earlier interactions, Babe noticed that the artist liked to chew on his pencils. She then used the disguise of a fan letter and sent him pencils laced with the same poison he used for killing his victims. The artist used these pencils to draw the doctor's face, and since he chewed on them, the poison kicks in soon enough. The artist eventually collapses and goes to meet Samuel in hell, after which Babe plans a hormone trip with her husband. The movie ends with the doctor waking up from his trance and wondering if he's been teleported to a hangover movie. Thanks for watching Real Recapped. Please hit the subscribe button so you can get notified for more videos like this.